Hey Kettle Corn Cousins, this is Mitch, your welder fabricator at KettleCornSupplies.com uh, Taking a few moments here to show you uh, the auto stir. Now you may have seen it on a couple of my other videos, but I've added a few things, changed a few things, not a whole lot, but there's a few um, uh, improvements here I want you to be aware of. I also want to kind of show you how to, to set this up on your bowl. Now currently the bowl you're looking at is an 80 quart bowl. There's many of us out here now that are using this Hobart uh, 80 quart bowl. It's actually a copy uh, and it's a pretty good copy. In fact, I, you, you really can't tell the difference between the real Hobart bowl and the copies. They're both made out of stainless steel. That's the main thing. The difference is one costs us about 400 bucks for the bowl and one costs us the other original is like a thousand. So it just makes more sense to get this one. Um, what I wanted to show you is the uh, main thing whoop, is what I'm pointing to right here. This is what I call my ceramic coating. This is a ceramic coating used on NASA's space shuttle and one coating gives you a R29 value. Now I had a hard time believing that right at first but I saw it on this old house I thought you know this might be kind of cool I might use this. It also has a heat resistant paint in it up to 800 degrees. So between the two I was pretty sold on wanting to give it a shot and it works amazingly well. Now when I put my hand here when I'm popping and you put your hand here you can't do it. Even with gloves it's pretty hot. This will get up to 150 degrees or more by itself. Now obviously it doesn't have the ceramic coating on it but um, it is straight metal so you don't want to touch this with bare skin. However I took my glove off and uh, apprehensively touched this and I found that no while it was warm it was not hot. I could actually leave my hand on there and it was it felt like probably oh, about 90 to 100 degrees. When I put my hand here it wasn't even cold. It wasn't cold but it wasn't warm either. I was like wow this is it's not cold but it's not warm. So we're not, we have air going through this thing keeping it cool on top of the insulation. However on this box right here you'll notice that I have it painted on the inside of the lid and also inside of the box. Well when I touch this it is physically cold to the touch just like it is right now as if I wasn't using it. With that with the vents on top so that any heat coming through that makes it into the box is going to get exited and the insulation it's keeping my electronics nice and cool and that's one of the big problems that most of the auto stirs and my competitors have had is one they've been burning up the electrical because they don't have it placed right they generally place it here with bare wire there's no conduit at all so I made sure I had plenty of conduit to protect the the wiring but also uh, with this ceramic coating I'm able to keep this really cool the other problem was motors were seizing up because it would get so hot in this box that it just would stop and you'd have to turn it off, let it cool off for a while and then um, you know start it up again. But you shouldn't have that problem with this one. You should be able to run this all day every day. Um, time would tell for sure but that's the impression I'm getting from my results and from my feedback from my customers. Now what I want to show you is probably the biggest thing so far that I have to brag about and that's this whip. The whip itself you'll notice that the inside of the bowls have this little bump right here that you have to be able to negotiate and navigate when you got a whip. If it were flat it would be much easier to deal with. You could just have one big long whip and it would stir the pot pretty well. However that's not the case. I had to bend this by hand initially now I finally have a die that bends this almost perfectly matching the inside of the bowl. So what I do is I get this adjusted in here. You'll notice that it has this, this, the uh, uh, spokes kind of coming out here holding this thing together so it doesn't flop around when you get it under pressure. You'll also notice I actually thought this was quite a good idea. I have a bicycle chain and what this bicycle chain does is there's going to be um, corn that gets underneath here. And how do you deal with that? You got to stir it. Well, what this does is it drags around behind it and it knocks these corn these uh, kernels out of the way. So I'm going to turn it on just for a second so you can kind of see it work. Whoop, I didn't hook up my battery. Got to do that. And the funny thing about these batteries is if you hook it up backwards, 
it just goes in reverse it doesn't hurt the motor so there we go all right let's go back and turn this on there we go now just watch a kernel in there for a few seconds and you're going to notice it's moving that corn pretty good now as it pops it'll even move it better but you'll notice also that it's tight down here and not as tight but pretty close right there now when you get this you're going to probably want to do some adjustments so what i want to show you is how to do the adjustments and to get it set up on your popper all right now hopefully I got that centered enough so you can see it um, when I test this in the shop sometimes they put this right up smack on the bottom and test it and it seems to work pretty good however once in a while it's just just a little bit too long too short and I'll, sh I'll or usually too long and I'll shim this here with some washers so you could go up as high as you want or as low as you want and get that the height of the um, adjusted perfectly. Now the problem with my competitors that I didn't care for was they have adjust on the inside. So you got a little Allen wrench there or you have a, a little pinch bolt. The pinch bolts were coming out during your popping process and it was also hard to actually get it just perfect. So and they'll have you put a piece of cardboard underneath or something like that to get that dimension right or distance right which works but this this works even better you're keeping this out of the way it also gives you a little bit more ventilation in here as you go up but if this is too far just take the washers out and drop it down a little lower or maybe you want to put a thinner washer in either way so that's what we have here now when you actually take this out and you put it in the bowl what you're going to do is you're going to center this just look down the shaft kind of eyeball it you don't need to get too perfect just kind of look in the side and say yeah that's pretty close that's pretty even that's your starting point okay now once you get it eyeballed straight you're going to turn it on and as you turn it on you're going to move it this way and this way you're going to go back and forth and side to side you're just going to kind of push it around because these aren't tight yet right these little bolts aren't tight you get that just about where you want it and then voila you stop hearing the noise and the scraping then you got your adjustment on the height just right with the washers which everything should be preset but you know everything's just a little different I just want to make sure that you have some adjustability in that once you get it all set turned on you're ready to pop there you go now the one thing about using an auto stir that you got to take in consideration one because of this lid you're not going to hear it pop as well so that's the other thing the other thing is because you have the lid on the gases and the oils are evaporating and stopping at the lid. So if you lift up the lid, well, then you're going to have that oils coming up, which is fine, like you do when you hand pop it. But if you don't and you leave it down, you're going to have more oil in your pot. Okay. So a good point is you want to use less oil, or a combination of less oil and lifting it up now and then to let the gases escape. All right. This is something you're going to work out. Uh, honestly, hand popping is better, but this sure saves your back, and by the end of the day, you'll be glad you had it. And you can do a little higher volume as well. All right, Kettle Corn Cousins, if you got any questions, give me a call. 360-477-0257. Uh, if I don't get to the phone right away, um, I'm either welding or grinding or doing something like that. Sometimes I just get my email, my voicemails at the end of the day because I get so many tele telemarketers now. It's so frustrating to run to a phone call and find out how to be a telemarketer but I am I am gonna get to my voicemail and I am gonna call you back and I hope to see you later talk to you be mighty my friends bye bye